Hey you guys, welcome back to House at Long Meadow. I've got a bag of potatoes, well, several bags of potatoes, and we're gonna get those in the ground today. It is, as you can tell from my tank top, it is unseasonably warm for February. I think the high today and for the next several days, it's like 85 degrees, which is awesome. Makes me feel like spring will be here in no time. But baby's down for a nap. We're gonna get some potatoes in the ground, so let's go. Okay, I've got my potatoes up here. We're almost ready to plant. Jacob and the twins are wrapping up some stuff and then they're going to come help me get some old trellising out of this garden bed and some leeks that we've been overwintering from last season. So while we're waiting, let's talk a little bit about planting potatoes, selecting potatoes for your zone, and all about their growing needs. First, let's debunk a common misconception about the need to hill potatoes. Hilling is when the plant starts to come up, you kick some additional dirt up onto that plant. Now, many people believe in doing so that that potato is going to grow more yield or more potatoes since we're adding dirt that it will send out new roots where that dirt has been hilled over it and it will grow more tubers. Now, that's a really common misconception, but for many potato varieties, that's simply not true. Hilling the potato will not increase the yield of that crop. So potatoes are part of the nightshade family, just like peppers, tomatoes, eggplants. And so because of that, potatoes come in a couple of varieties. Determinant potatoes, meaning that plant is only going to grow to a certain height for its entire growing season, or indeterminate, meaning it will continue to grow up and to vine out as it grows the entire length of its life cycle. So most of the potatoes that we grow here in the South are a determinant variety potato, meaning it's only gonna grow to a specific height. It's only going to produce roots to a certain height on that stem. So if you're growing a determinant variety of potato, it's really not worth your time to hill potatoes throughout your growing season. And if you're a gardener, a homesteader, raising farm animals, you know that your to-do list each and every day is long. So anytime I can just eliminate a step or eliminate a process that's not needed, I do so. So how do you know if your potatoes are determinate or indeterminate? Really, a quick Google search will do that for you. Unfortunately, many of the potato companies that sell potatoes don't list on their descriptions whether or not a potato is determinate or indeterminate. Typically, they will describe potatoes or group them into early, mid-season, and late-season varieties. Now, typically, your early and your mid-season variety potatoes are going to be your determinate varieties, while your late season varieties, those that have a really long um, growing season, those are typically going to be your indeterminate variety potatoes. Okay, so what is the point of hilling potatoes? Well, since potatoes are a part of the nightshade family, they produce something called solanine. So if the potatoes, when you're growing them, if if those potatoes are pushed to the top of the soil, as more potato tubers are growing, the ground is kind of pushing potatoes out. When those potatoes are exposed to sunlight during their growing season, it produces that compound solanine. If you've ever seen a green skinned potato, it's because it's been exposed to too much light. So the benefit to hilling potatoes or throwing more dirt on top of them as they're growing is not to produce more potatoes, but simply to ensure that those potatoes stay nice and covered underground as they're growing. When potatoes produce too much of the compound solanine, 
that green skin turns bitter, and if eaten in really large quantities, it's not great for your health. So since I don't bother healing potatoes, I'm gonna show you another way to prevent your potatoes from turning green without the effort of healing potatoes. Okay, so what do potatoes need to grow really healthy yields of potatoes? Well, one thing they prefer is really loose soil. So you want about eight inches of loose soil wherever you're growing your potatoes. Remember, we want those roots to easily go through the ground and we want to have nice, airy, loose soil so that we can grow large tubers of potatoes. Now, we grow in compost beds, so each year we add some additional compost to these to improve soil fertility. But as far as fertilizer needs go, potatoes need a really well-balanced fertilizer. We will typically come in as our potatoes are growing and we will top dress those potatoes with a balanced fertilizer versus putting fertilizer right in the ground with the potatoes when we plant them. We want the roots of those potatoes growing out and looking for nutrients so that we spread everything out and grow larger potatoes. If we keep all the fertilizer right there at the potato, whenever we put it in the ground, whenever we plant it, then all of its needs are gonna be right there in one area. And so you will notice if you fertilized in just one area that most of your potatoes or most of your tubers are right there clumped up um, where you originally planted those potatoes. So by top dressing, those potatoes, as they grow, we're getting a slower release of fertilizer into the soil. Okay, so if you're new to planting potatoes, you might be wondering, how do I select the right varieties for my growing zone? Now, if you go back to a video that I put out back in December, where we talked about selecting seeds, one of the things that I recommended to you was to shop at your local farm store. There going to have great varieties of potatoes that are good varieties for your specific growing area. Now, I typically do a little bit of online shopping and shopping at my local farm store. My local farm store always carries a red Pontiac potato that my family has grown for decades. It's a really great red new potato and I love it. And then I also like the convenience of shopping online. I typically will buy some varieties of potatoes from Gurney's Seed Store. They have quite a bit more varieties of potatoes than I can get here locally. So I've got um, a few bags of a Yukon Gold potato. Those have a really nice buttery flavor. They're a determinant variety potato. And then I also picked up some red Lesota potatoes. Those again are a determinate variety potato. And then I've got a couple bags of a russet Burbank potato. Now russet potatoes are going to be one of those long season or indeterminate varieties, meaning they are going to keep growing throughout the season. Now, when you're shopping, it's really important to know your growing zone know how many days you have in your season from planting to harvesting, from your last frost date in the spring to your first frost date in the fall. That amount of days is gonna be critical to knowing what varieties you can grow. Many of your early or mid-season varieties can be done in about 60 or 70 days while your long season varieties or your late varieties are going to take sometimes over a hundred days before they are able to produce a good yield. So if you have a really short growing season, if you are further up north and you have really short spring and summer season, it's gonna be really hard for you to get those nice large potatoes with a late season variety of potato. So super important to know how many days you have in your growing season, 
before you go shopping for potatoes online. Also, you want the potatoes to still have some firmness. Now, it's really common for them to look wrinkly and old and to almost have like a raisin type texture on the outside of the potato. That's normal. Most often seed potatoes have been in storage for many months and that's perfectly fine. But we want quite a bit of firmness left in those potatoes. That is where the energy is going to come from for this potato to send out sprouts and to grow a new potato plant. Now, people will often ask, well, can't I just plant potatoes from the grocery store? There is some truth to that, but you want to look for potatoes that are organic or potatoes that you know have not been sprayed. Standard bag of potatoes at the grocery store has typically been sprayed with something called a sprout inhibitor, and that's to keep those potatoes from sprouting in the grocery store. They want those potatoes to have the longest shelf life possible. So those sprout inhibitors inhibit those potatoes from sprouting new plants. If you are going to plant potatoes from the grocery store, just make sure you're looking for something organic you know has not been sprayed. All right, so you've picked out your potato varieties, you've got them in hand, made it home to your garden. Now, when should you plant your potatoes? Well, many of the old timers would say, at least here in the South, that you should plant your potatoes on Valentine's Day. And I know further up North, many of the old timers would say you should plant on St. Patrick's Day. Now, while the old timers typically know exactly what they're talking about, there is something you want to be aware of. In my case, Valentine's Day is about six to eight weeks before my last frost date. If I plant my seed potatoes that early and then we get a really, really rainy season over the next six to eight weeks, what can happen is the ground stays super saturated. It's still too cold for those potatoes to sprout and grow. And I could lose much of my potato crop in the ground from rotting and we don't want that to happen so typically your seed companies are going to recommend that you plant them about two to three weeks before your last frost date all right i think my crew is almost ready so let's get to planting Okay, so the first step that you're going to need to do when you're ready to start planting your potatoes is make sure that your soil is nice and loose. Since we're not hilling our potatoes, we're going to be planting them about seven or eight inches deep. And so we need the soil to be really loose and fluffy. Now these beds were not planted in over the winter. So what can happen is as it rains throughout the season, the soil can settle down and get a little bit compacted. We're up on a hill, which is really windy, so that top layer of soil can get really dry. And so we wanna turn the soil over, make sure it's nice and fluffy and nice and loose for our potatoes. Okay, since we're not hilling our potatoes, how do we need to prep these beds for planting? I'm going to plant those potatoes about seven or eight inches deep. That depth, as the potato grows up, will give it plenty of room to send out those roots and to grow some nice large tubers. So what I've got here is a couple of trenches to get us started. They're eight inches deep and they're about a foot to 16 inches apart. The reason we want our trenches so close together is as that plant grows up, it's going to shade the topsoil really nicely in my bed, which is going to do a couple of things. 
One, it's going to prevent weeds from growing in the bed. It's going to keep that soil nice and shaded. And it's also going to help any potatoes that are kind of pushed to the top of the soil as they're growing. It will shade those potatoes from the sunlight to prevent those potatoes from producing solanine if by chance they are exposed to sunlight. So about a foot apart, and then within each trench, um, I'm going to plant about four potatoes. So our beds here are about four foot wide. So we're going to space these potatoes about a foot apart in width, just like we are spacing our trenches. Now, mine are just now starting to sprout, but you wanna make sure if yours have started to sprout really well, that you're pointing those sprouts up. If you point the potato sprouts down, then your potato is gonna have to work harder to grow out and around before it can go up. Now, you can also um, cut your potatoes in half or in really several pieces. As long as it has a sprout on it, you can lay those pieces out and let the cut part um, dry up and form a skin and you can plant that those will grow just fine. I have enough potatoes here to cover the amount of beds I'm doing so I'm not bothering with cutting the potatoes up. Now in just a few short weeks these potatoes will start sprouting that beautiful green foliage and we'll be well on our way to having a nice crop of potatoes. All right. Thanks for spending some time in the garden with me today. As always, I hope you are inspired to go grow something of your own and to nurture the soil that your feet are planted on. I hope you all have a great week and we're gonna keep enjoying this really nice weather and get the rest of these potatoes in the ground. We'll see you next time. In the description box below this video, you'll find a link to a blog post that goes more in depth on potato planting. It's a great reference to have on hand when you get around to planting your own potatoes. If you'd like more gardening tips and advice, you can check out this playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Your subscribe goes a long way to helping support our YouTube channel.